All right, guys, today we're going to be playing with cameras and dudes. Um, we're going to set up a camera in Home Assistant, and dudes is just a standalone TensorFlow that can run in a Docker container. Um, I've got the Unify G3. You can use any camera with this. The beauty of it is you can turn any cheap camera into a fancy camera, kind of. But without further ado, let's go ahead and jump in. If you got the same camera as me, you can follow these steps directly. If you don't, it's generally the same process. You're just grabbing uh, IP streams and snapshot URLs. So pay extra attention for those parts and let's get started. Go ahead and open your router and find your camera. For me, I already changed it to backyard cam because that's where I'm going to put it once we're done with all this. Um, usually it'd be called Unify G3 or G3 Flex or Ubiquity something. You'll be able to find it. Grab the IP and browse to that location. Once you're there, it's going to tell you to set up and do a standalone setup. There's two, you know, you can have it managed, but we don't want that. Go ahead and go to your network and set a static IP so it doesn't change on you while we're playing with all this and this is the important part enable anonymous snapshot that's going to allow us to just grab the snapshot url without putting any authentication or anything crazy that's specifically for this uh, the second part is going to be the rtsp stream this is going to apply to everything uh, you're going to want to disable this for now too you can enable that in the future. It's just an extra hoop to jump through, and I just want to keep this simple. So take note, once you've done all that, get your IP, and then get your stream URL. And then we'll go ahead and hop into Home Assistant and get the camera going. All right, so we're going to go ahead and add a camera here. Go ahead and make the platform generic. Name it uh, whatever you want. I just named it UBC Flex because that's what it is. We're going to do still image URL and... You're going you're gonna to probably want to Google and find out what exactly your camera outputs your snapshots to for the G3. It's just the IP with snap.jpg. And if you don't have the anonymous snapshot enabled, you will not be able to use this. So double check that. Stream source, that's the stream URL that we jotted down earlier. And then verify SSL, false. Now... We can go ahead and set that up now so you can see it. Go ahead and add picture entity. Ah, and there's my mug back on the uh, on the thing here. And then just switch this to live and it'll have your stream simple stuff for now all right and now we'll go ahead and jump into our virtual machine and set up dudes which is going to run tensorflow for us all right so you're either going to be in a virtual machine here or in the terminal on your home assistant build or on a laptop or you know wherever you're running a container at first thing we're going to do is docker docker pull Nozak dudes latest. Alright. I already have it, so that was simple. Docker run P And once you ran that, go ahead and control C it out. We're gonna do Docker container LSA. And you see that jumble? Uh, that's a pain, so let's go ahead and do Docker rename 16AB30A0ED5. And just name it dudes. Right, Docker container LSA. See, now it's just named dudes. So now we want to run that. Docker start dudes. 
makes it simple um that's it that's it for that now we got tensorflow running once again let's go ahead and uh well let me show you guys you can deep dive in this so you got the dudes page on home assistant it'll show you everything you can play with here because i'm just going to show you a couple things so right, we got one more step before we can fully integrate dudes here um go ahead and if you don't have the terminal add-on grab it now and come back um once you're in there do a cd two dots and bring yourself to the top you can pull up your directory structure with ls we're going to go straight into config and now here you can see there are three names highlighted in blue the one i'm worried about is www that's our local access folder you're going to see why this is important in a moment but if you don't have it go ahead and do mkdir make directory www once you've done that you can get out of this crazy stuff now go to your file editor we're going to do i'm just going to do this all in one shot and i'll show you guys once we save and restart what happens do your image processing platform is going to be dudes url url of our virtual machine on port 8080 detector default scan interval you don't even have to use this one the default is 10 um like i said this is kind of resource intensive so that's why i'm running it on my NUC on a virtual machine and i knock it down to five because we want quicker results but we don't got to go crazy the source is going to be camera dot whatever you named your camera so ubc flex ubc flex file out this is why we created our local folder because we'll be able to access this image locally which is great for speed uh, name this whatever you want i named it objects.jpg because we're detecting objects and then confidence level that's going to be the percentage of certainty you want dudes and tensorflow to have before circling an image and bothering you with it i got 70 some people might think that's too high um yeah i don't know i'm a little crazy so we're gonna add a camera for our dudes capture platform generic name whatever you want i called it uvc dudes and still image url this is exactly why we set all the image stuff up on our local folder because now right here that's the home assistant ip with port 8123 don't forget that because otherwise it won't come up local you can't access that without that www folder and then the name of our jpeg here so this is going to allow us to treat that as a camera the snapshot's going to update every five seconds it's going to look like a camera so once you got that all set up now we can restart all right so we uh we kind of set everything up at once there so we wouldn't have to restart the server 10 times but I'll go ahead and piece by piece, we'll make sure this works. Go to your developer tools, find your image processing. And as you can see here, it's popping up already a person. The confidence percentage, it's perfect. It's above 70, that person is me, so we're good to go. Um, the next thing we wanna check, go ahead in your file editor and just copy that little URL we made earlier. yep there it is capturing me and i might want to knock the confidence down because they don't know it cans here or anything else but like i said some people might think it's too high but we like to be confident here all right and what can you do with this well let me show you one thing if you just want everything to show up with the with the boxes around it there's the camera we made, UBC Dudes. Go ahead and make that live. And pretty much that's gonna be like a lagged behind version of the live cam, but with squares on it. So that's cool, right? Anyway, that's all you need to get your object detection going. Um, 
you can use this for anything you want send notifications yell at people you know this just this is the base this opens the opportunities up as always hope you guys enjoyed um hope it was helpful any suggestions anything you need help with drop a comment if it helped like subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next one